worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are our Father and Omega. Worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you. Stop. 
so good you're so awesome Lord you're perfect in all of your ways Lord you don't make mistakes you are the king of righteousness Lord you don't know any other thing but to do right you are the only wise true and living God and we tell you thank you Lord, we appreciate you, God, for being so good to us, even when we haven't been good to ourselves. Lord, we pray, God, that you speak to us. Lord, pour into us as we've emptied out ourselves. God, give us fresh manna from on high. In the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength. My Redeemer, God, we rebuke every distraction, every hindrance. In the name of Jesus, God, that we can eat the whole world tonight. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Come on, let us put our hands together and give a praise again. Amen. We certainly thank God for being God. Amen. Being God all by himself. Amen. We certainly thank God for my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Certainly thank God for the presiding bishop, Bishop McLeod, our district bishop, Bishop Williams, our district elder Philiston. Amen to each and every one of you that sits in the body of Christ. We appreciate the Lord for you coming to be with us. Amen. You may be seated. I want to minister to you from this message how to respond to the king of kings how to respond to the king of kings you know is one thing to know a king but then it's another thing to know a king of kings Someone that's superior to everybody. Someone that is greater than everybody. Someone, amen, and I'm not sure if you've ever been to a particular country where they have a king, but the king is the most, if you will, royal person in that specific region or territory. And what baffles me is that we know our God not just to be a king, but we know him to be the king of every king, which means that the reverence that he gets should be second to none. The reverence that our king gets should not be compared to when a Donald Trump comes, when a Joe Biden comes, when a Barack Obama comes, because presidents, in fact, are kings of a kingdom. So the king of this country that we live in, you know, their king, is Joe Biden currently. And when Joe Biden decides to go to a specific territory, everything shuts down. They shut down the highways. Hallelujah. They, amen, school zones that they go to, certain, I, I believe Barack Obama came to Savannah Tech, or one of them, Donald Trump, somebody came to Savannah Tech a long time ago. And they stopped almost the whole entire city because a king was coming. So all things were stopped, and there was a great reverence for the king that was coming. Now, we have all of these kings 
all of these specific cities, when you meet the mayor of this little town, people get excited. They see Jonathan McCullough. If uh, the governor of this state will come, people will get excited. Joe Biden comes, people will get excited. But these are just regular old kings. My God. But when you know the king of all of these kings, your reverence becomes different. When we look at the Bible, and I'm going to give you some scripture because I want to go dig in this a little bit because I think the church has failed to reverence the king of kings. And sometimes we treat the king of kings like he's just a regular old Joe Biden. <laughs> we treat Jesus like he's a regular old Barack Obama. My God, when Barack Obama was selected the president of the United States of America, people were going crazy. People were buying T-shirts that said, we finally made it. People were wearing hats. People were getting flags. But when you know the king of kings, my God, where's your shirt that said Jesus is the king of all kings? Where he is, my God, your reverence to the real king. Everybody had this thing going on when their favorite president come around. When Trump was president, everybody was wearing them big ugly red hats that said make America great again. But we have the king of all kings, and we need to start making our worship great again. We need to make our reverence great again. We need to make our praise great again. I wish I had the right church with me. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 28, this is when, in fact, well, let me go back a little bit. Amen. We do know the story about Adam. And how he was made in God's image and he was a king. He lost his kingship. And then God, in fact, was the king of Israel after he chosen these people. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. We'll find that the people did not want God as their king anymore. Just as, amen, people today inside of their behaviors... Your behavior show that you don't want this king, Jesus, my God, just like Israel. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 8 and 1, read, uh-huh. And it came to pass. Came to pass. When Samuel was old, that he made his son judges over Israel. Now the name of, the, of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside at the lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. And the reason why I'm going back to the stage of letting you know to acknowledge the king of kings is so when you have children, you'll teach your children how to reverence God. Instead of, amen, making your child do all of these different things throughout the worship part of the service, teach your baby how to worship. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. In the middle of the service, amen, teach your baby how to praise and how to reverence God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, it teaches that uh, 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 Israel was to know that there was only one Lord. And he said, I want you to teach your children and your children's children. Every time a child is born, they need to know that I'm God. So now when it comes to you all, amen, when you have children and they have the ability to understand, we should be teaching our children how to worship God. We need to teach our children how to reverence God as a king. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read, uh huh. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah uh -huh. and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. 
But the king, but but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. They have rejected God as their king. They didn't want him to reign over them. This was a bad thing to do. Amen. In fact, one of the worst things, one of the worst things you could do is not acknowledge somebody in their kingship. One of the worst things that you can do is not reverence someone as king when they are king. Read, uh-huh. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this place, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Uh -huh. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, Howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the of king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariot. So now we see that this is the first indication where Israel rejected God as their king. They wanted somebody tangible. As today, you know, people are, and, and they can't comprehend reverencing an invisible God. That's why you have so many people that are gathering rocks gathering stones, gathering all these different tangible items to worship because they can't uh, uh, fathom worshiping an invisible God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But we find, amen, in the book of John, chapter number four. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I want you to get this because I want to see these children grow up Understanding how to worship God. Understanding how imperative it is to honor and reverence the King of Kings. We don't want to just teach them, amen, the history of the United States of America. We don't want to just teach them all of these historical figures. How do your child know about Martin Luther King, Christopher Columbus, but they don't know nothing about the King of Kings? My God, I wish I had the right church. We have so many uh, 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 things that we teach our children to where we don't teach them, amen, how to honor and reverence the King of Kings. Amen. It's the King of Kings that woke him up this morning, not Martin Luther King. My God, I know the last name is King, but he's not, he's just a king, but he's not the king. My God, I wish I had a few of y'all. And so we allow our children, and I'm not against history, I love history. We allow our children to learn about all of these figures. Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Rosa Parks, all of these different people. And they reverence them and know about them. But when it comes down to the King of Kings, there's no reverence. You know why? Because... Amen. There's a parental problem. There's a problem with the parent. The parent don't reverence the king of kings like they should. Parent only represent, uh, uh, reverence the king of kings, amen, when things are going good, when they're feeling good, when everything's going well. It's give God the glory, give God the praise. You're running around, flipping around the church, but when things are going bad, there's no reverence for the king. But David understood that the king was always going to be king. And he said, I'm going to bless this king at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody shout hallelujah. I need to reach over to somebody and say, neighbor, you got to do better about the king of kings. Uh, you know, folks will brag on people. Why don't we brag on the king of kings? Why don't we brag on how good the king has been to us? You know you don't deserve that job you got. You don't. You know you don't deserve that car you got. You know you don't deserve that house that you live in. But the king of kings allowed it to happen for you, and he should be reverenced for it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give me the book of John, chapter 4. 
Hallelujah. Things we must do. We got to worship the king. And when I say worship, we got to worship the king better. We need to position ourselves, amen, to where we can worship the king in spirit and in truth. You know, I've realized, uh, Sister Alicia, that we've come to a place now where we get too cute to really worship God. We can't really reverence the king of kings because we look too good. We've dressed up too pretty to where you can't really get on your face and reverence the king. You know, when you go to any country in this world, most case scenario, when you meet people in authority, first thing they do is bow down to the king. And because he's just not a regular king, they can get the regular bow, but because he's a king of kings, I, I got to get on my knees and bow. My God. I wish I had the right to. And sometimes we look at all of these different people that are reigning and we reverence them, but don't reverence the king of kings. Somebody say hallelujah. Now we find here John chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. And verse number 24. Uh, we'll start at 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. The hour come. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is seeking for true worshipers. And true worshipers, because worshiping deals with a bow. Worshiping deals with a reverence. A true worshiper, they're worshiping because they understand who the king of kings is. My God. See, sometimes when we just, amen, just know the king of kings just to be the son of God. And we don't know the king of kings to be the manifested God in the flesh. Then we're, we don't have the thought process of, oh my God, I need to reverence him in the beauty of holiness. I need to worship him in the beauty of holiness. I can't just sit here and come to church. And I know sometimes we come to church not feeling good. I know sometimes we come here and don't feel like it. But because he's a king of kings, we ought to just do it. Y'all not talking. I know you got problems at your house. I know you got problems on your job. I know you got problems in your mind. But when the king enters the building, all of your problems need to be at the door. You say, you know what? I came to the church to worship the king. I came to the church to praise the king. So whatever I have going on outside, I can't bring it into the king's house. You know what? I'm going to leave my problems at the door. I'm going to leave the headache at the door. I'm going to leave my thoughts at the door. When I get in. I, I don't want nothing hindering me from worshiping the king. I don't want nothing hindering me from praising the king. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to grab hold of your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, don't you let your problems stop you from worshiping the king. My God, somebody shout hallelujah. Not just your problems, but sometimes you may not feel good in your body. My God, the ailment might be beating you. Up your stomach, your head, hurt, your body rocking with pain, my God. But I don't care how you feel. When you enter into the gates, my God, the Bible said enter into his grace with thanksgiving. Lord, my body don't feel good, but I'm still going to thank you. My head is bothering me, but I'm still going to thank you. My stomach is upset, but I'm still going to thank you. I got a headache. My mind is messed up. I'm still going to thank you, my God. And not only that, the Bible says and enter his course with praise. I'm going to thank God. I'm going to praise him even when I don't feel like it. Just like on Monday morning, after you done have three services on Sunday, early Monday morning you got to go to work. You don't feel like doing it, but you're clocking. You might not feel like being here, but when you got here, you might as well be like David. I was glad when they said unto me, my God, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you should be glad that you came here. Take that frown off your face. You might as well smile. You're in the house of the Lord. And he ought to be reverenced because he's the king of all kings. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Says, Father in spirit and truth, the Father seeketh such to worship 
God is looking for somebody that's not concerned about what happened before they got here. I need somebody that's going to worship me. I'm not no regular king. He made everything. We're not talking about some things. The Bible said he made all things. Bible says that thing, things exist because of him and then they consist because of him. Oh my, God. my God, what kind of God is that? <laughs> everything is in existence because of him and then everything that come together is because of him. Oh Read God is a spirit. He's a spirit. And they that worship him. And they, see now oh you have a choice. Now, will you be the one to worship him? Yes. And I know some of y'all say, well, I'm only 12 years old. I'm only 15 years old. My God, I don't care how old you are. You can be trained up how to worship God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Let me show you something. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Chapter 9, verse number 19, uh -huh. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? Uh -huh. We are greatly confounded because we have for forsaken the land. Uh -huh. Because our dwellings have cast us out. Yes. Yet hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. All ye women. All ye women. And let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Yes. And teach your daughters. And teach your what? Daughters. Daughters. Teach them babies how to get down and worship God. Amen. It's like you got babies out there twerking. Come on down. They learned it from somewhere. You got the little babies out here thugging. You know what? They learned it from somewhere. That's right. See a little three-year-old boy, little boy couldn't say no, no alphabet, but carrying around a little plastic gun, sagging his pants, talking about, oh, give me that, give me this. You know how he got there? He learned it. So if he can learn that behavior, I can learn worship. I can learn praise. I can learn, my God, I wish I had the right folks with me. And the problem is we fail to teach worship. Amen. Your behavior every time you go through, see, some of y'all gonna train these kids that'll be just like you. On, a roller coaster. On, some of these kids gonna be just like a roller coaster, just like you. Only time they praise God is when things are good. Yeah. Only time they stand up and reverence God is when things are going good. Yeah. But when things are bad and messed up, and you sit down there, pop, guess what your baby's going to start doing? The same thing. Some of y'all, y'all raising up some rebels. Raising up little rebels. Because your behavior shows. See, see, when your behavior shows that you'll worship no matter what, you're going to worship regardless, you'll start seeing these little babies. They ain't looking at the hands. Oh, how mommy lifting her? Say hallelujah around some of these babies. See if they lift their hands. Some of these babies know because they're being trained how to worship. You got some babies, they hear music, and they'll clap, clap their hands and go like this. You see other babies hear some music, they start bouncing and shaking and rocking. You say, wait, wait, well, hold on now. You got one baby. That's praising, and then you got one baby that look like they're twerking or something. S hip swaying a little bit too much. So now we got two different kids. What's the difference? I'm training you this. She's training this. So are you training your kids on how to reverence God? How to reverence the king? Find out who the king is by the reverence. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
And see, I know we fought Adam, and I know we beat Adam up because of what he did, but you got to realize that God was the king. And he allowed Adam to be in that state of a king on the earth. And when he messed up, he didn't want to be in his presence like that. Because he understood his kingship. God, somebody shout hallelujah. We have to start training to worship regardless. We got to start training to praise regardless. Somebody shout hallelujah. We got to start training to reverence regardless. I tell you what, anybody ever been to court? They, that judge don't care. The bailiff don't care how you feel in your body. When they do this, all rise, everybody, everything going to rise up in there. Because it's the rule of the court. And how can we reverence the judge? But we can't reverence the king of kings. My God, we've been driving the speed limit and see the police and you still hitting on brakes. You know why? Because you reverence my God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The speed limit is 55. You doing 55? But then you see the blue lights, you automatically, you, you think you're in the car praising. You don't know what you're doing. And you're not even speeding. You know why? Because there's a reverence there. And see, reverence, it changes behavior. My God. Reverence causes you to do things, my God. It don't matter if you're doing good or bad, but reverence causes you to change. So when, my God, I feel, I want to get you there. When I come into the house of God, there's a certain reverence in here. My God, I'm not playing no games. I'm not texting nobody. I'm not shopping online. I'm not hanging out on my computer. I came here to give God the glory. Not playing no tic-tac-toe. I'm, my God, y'all ain't saying, I'm not in here shooting the bobo. I came to reverence God. And when I come into his house, I didn't come to play with you. I came to get something from God. And a lot of times, a lot of folk, a lot of folk in the church ain't going from A to B because you came here to play. But I ain't come here to play. I came to lift him up. I came to magnify him. I came to worship. Somebody shout hallelujah. You might as well grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I don't know what you came in to do, but I came here to magnify the king. I came to exalt the king. It's the king's house. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of y'all might need to go back to Bibles and put your phones down. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because sometimes the phone could be more of a distraction. Sometimes the computer, and then we can't, I don't want to go too far, but some of y'all be watching stuff on your phones that you shouldn't be watching it. Some of the stuff you watch on the computer, you shouldn't be watching it. And you pull up the Bible app on the same thing, you might need to change your scenario. Y'all don't talk. I came to reverence God. So when I came in here, I didn't come to bother with you. I didn't even come to see what you got on. Church has become a fashion statement. Church has become so competitive to where people are doing things to be seen. But I listen, when I come, that's why my eyes cold. I ain't come to look at you. I came to worship them. You trying to find out why I picked me a corner? You can laugh at me, scorn me, but I came to lift him up. I want to pick a corner. I stand by the wall. I lay down on the floor, but I came to worship him. Somebody shout hallelujah. So afraid to get down on the altar because you're worried about what folk thinking about. Came here to worship God. And if you focus on what I'm doing, you ain't come to do what I came to do. If you know every move that I made, you didn't come to do what I came to do. My God, somebody shout hallelujah. 
We come in here and we sing that. I don't know what you're coming to do. No, I, I do know what I came to do. You don't have to ask me what did I come to do because it's evident that I came to leave for joy. It's evident that I came to spin around. It's evident that I came to lift him up. Oh, it's evident. Oh, you see me with my book out. You see me with my Bible out. It's evident that I came to get away. My God, somebody shout hallelujah. You don't have to ask me what I came here to do. I know, and you know what I came to do. Because you can see it. You see me with my book out. You see me with my notepad and my pen. You know I came to get a word. Don't even sit by me if you want to play. I ain't come, I ain't come for no playing. This ain't no game. I can't. It's about my soul. Play on your job, play at school, but don't play in here. This is God's house. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, it's your neighbor. It's God's house. Give me. We got to worship the king. And we also have to reverence the king. And reverencing the king is so powerful because he said that's his name. But you get me, Psalm 111. And verse number 9. Psalm 11 and verse number 9. Psalm 111 and 9, I'm sorry. Uh-huh, I'm reading. He sent redemption. He sent, sent redemption unto his people. Uh-huh. He have commanded his covenant forever. Uh-huh. Holy, holy and reverend. And what? Reverend, reverend is his name. Is his name. So now this is the reason why me as a pastor. I don't call myself reverend. I can't call myself reverend. Don't call me Reverend Eli. Don't call me Reverend Porter. Because the Bible says Reverend is his man. And see, when his name is reverent, then that means that in everything that I do, I have to reverence him because it's a part of his name. Y'all, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. And because it's his name, my God, I got to reverence him. Watch this. Read the next verse. Uh huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Uh-huh. His praise endureth forever. So now I got to understand oh, how to praise and reverence this man that called himself Reverend. Yeah. Reverend God. That's the only reverence. I know you got all these reverence everywhere, but that's the only reverend. You know why? Because he wants the most reverence. Because he's God. And we fail to reverence him, we reverence our bills. Got real quiet. We reverence our vehicles. We reverence our schools. We reverence our education. We reverence our jobs. But we can't reverence the king. You know, when I was in school and somebody beside me was cutting up and I saw the principal or the teacher coming, I would remove myself because I recognized that a person that was coming, we had a reverence for. And I could get in trouble if I'm sitting by you with this foolishness. Yes, sir. Come on. And in certain cases, if I was with one of my friends, sitting beside them, teacher coming and they cutting up. Hey, hey, they're coming. They're coming. I'm doing my, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but he over there playing. And because he over there playing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Tap him. And see, some of you all need to get in the mindset of, hey, I came to church. I need you. Hey, hey, look, look hold on. You, you're the only person that ain't clapping. Hold on now. I need you to clap. 
I need you, hey, hey, I need you to stand up and reverence God. I need you to do, I need you to do, y'all ain't saying that. Because the king is here and we all are reverence the king. Tap, tap, hey. Straighten up. They're coming. Me and my brother used to always be in trouble. Oh. <laughs> we always in trouble. And my, my father was the, the disciplinary. This is when he was, when he was there. He was the disciplinary. <laughs> you know, I got throat shot. But, but <laughs> so me and my brother, we'd be cutting up. And they done told us to stop. My mama told us to stop. But we trying to figure out who's going to get the last hit. So we'll do little stupid stuff. You know, we, we try to act like we ain't hitting each other, like, you know, like just a little tap on the foot, and that's the last hit. So then he go like this. And then I go like this. Yeah, we, we, you know, we, we did that. To rub a bump up against somebody. And so my father was coming. So we both, we try to, we both trying to straighten up because the person that was in authority was coming. When are you going to straighten your praise up because you know he's in the midst? When are you going to straighten up your worship because you know he's in the midst? When God is in the midst, we should be, oh, hey, get yourself there, hey. You, you, you don't see me running. You don't see me jumping. You don't see me praying. Why are you looking at me? You should be doing what I'm doing. We came to reverence the king. God, somebody shout hallelujah. I mean, hey, God is here, man. We... Everybody's snot and falling out. You just look in the sky. Look in the sky. Did I miss something? Yeah, you missed it. We need to be reverence to the king. Everybody is worshiping, and you looking around. You don't know what you came to do? You didn't come to play with your thumbs. You came here to reverence God. Babies and all came to reverence. Came to give God the glory. We got to get back. When I was in church as a young man, I used to have an usher board. Everybody standing up and praising God. And you know, we was over there chilling. And so they'll come over there and say, hey, you, you need to go to stand up. And whisper in your ear the first time, and then you act like you can't hear them. They just pick you up. <laughs> go ahead and embarrass you. <laughs> when they start getting our kids involved in the service to reverence God. Because your child isn't exempt from death. Uh-oh, y'all ain't, uh-oh, let's get out real quiet now. Just because you're a teenager don't mean that you're exempt from worship. Just because you're 11 and 10 and 12, I get my kids, my, my, my daughter sometimes, I'm glad she awake. I love you, baby. Sometimes she'd be over there knocked out. She be, uh, uh, she be, she definitely absent. She might be present with the Lord. I don't know, but she definitely be absent from the body. <laughs> she, her head be on. <laughs> she be, <laughs> she be in the third heaven. Tell these brothers, somebody beside her, wake her up, get them in this involved in the service, straighten them up, get it, pick it up. Praise worship going on. And the word, they probably can't understand it. They don't understand it. That's different. But doing praise and worship, that's understood. Everybody ought to praise. Everybody ought to worship. We got to teach our kids. Bring them back into, you know, getting involved so they can understand. And they need examples. You can't be telling them to stand up and you sitting down. You can't be telling them to lift their hands up and your hands in your pocket. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. Sometimes we try to expect these kids to do certain things, and we're not even doing it. I can make your child get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to pray, and you down there sleep. Come on, let's pray. Hey, it's prayer time, and you over there sleep. Just come to the church. We got prayer. You, if you go into the prayer, prayer meetings on Thursday, don't leave your child home. Bring your child to prayer. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
You know why? We need to teach these babies how to reverence the king so when they get your age, they already understand it. Right. See, some of y'all didn't learn how to reverence the king until you became an adult. Amen. And that's why you have so, because sometimes you get stuck in your ways. They say you can't teach an old dog. I ain't trying to call y'all dogs, but. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes a person can get so old and grown and groomed in their own ways to where you'll be preaching a message to teach how to worship, teach how to reverence God. They haven't done it for so long. They'll do it for a little while, then they regress. Do it for a little bit, then they pull back. We got to get to the place where we're reverencing God because he is the king of kings. I got two more scriptures for you all, and I'm going to let you all go. One thing I want you to know, Psalm 34 and 3, one thing about worshiping is that we have to, uh, one thing about how to respond to the king is that we need to magnify him. Psalms 34 and three. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. All right. It says do what? Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, with magnify. Me. So let, let, let's talk about magnifying. So this is something that we must yeah. do because he's a king of kings. Now, anybody ever took a science class where they had to get a magnifying glass? No? Well, some of y'all wear them. <laughs> y'all here with me? Sometimes you got to wear them. <laughs> A magnifying glass, what does it do? Make things bigger. So, <laughs> so if it's small or in an area where it's recognized as small, you put something on to make it larger make it bigger and so when the bible says magnify the lord with me that means i need to make god what bigger so when i say make him big i'm talking about so everybody can see him everybody needs to know in every aspect of my life i serve the king of kings so when i some of y'all got it y'all some of y'all even on your job they don't even know you're saying that's because you don't magnify your own family don't even think you're saved. They don't even know you're saved. You know why? Because you don't magnify them. People everywhere you go, and, and one thing I do know, you know, some of these brothers and, and, and sisters, I, I know one thing, uh, 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 Diego, he, he, he's one of my drivers. I got to pray for him. He's one of my drivers in my business. And they always say, they, there's a couple things they say about him. But one of the main things that they say about him is that he loved God. They said that he always talking about God. One lady said, I just, he just won't shut up about God. I just don't know. <laughs> said he, I said, well, I don't think he, he'll, he'll, he'll shut up at all, but we thank God. <laughs> but, 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 say, they, they, they kept saying, he's always reverencing God. Every driver, anybody that I've ever drive after him, they said, who's that light-skinned fella that always be talking? I said, his name Diego. He said, you know, He's always talking about how much he loved God, what God has done. And what happens is so now that he's made him bigger, he didn't just make him big so he could see. He created a magnifying glass so they could see. And it's our, res my God, it's our responsibility to make the magnifying glass not just so you can see, but everybody can see who my king is. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, man, I, he's just been so good to me. I've. I've been here, I've done that, and he did not give up on me. That's, that's magnifying, you know. I used to be in this condition, but God took me out. That baby that just came up here said that she got healed, that the drain is in her ear, that went back to the doctor, said, that's magnifying him. So now somebody else can now, out of her scope, she see him as a healer. So now you probably only saw him as a father. But because her magnifying glass showed that he was a healer, so now you say, my God, 
Okay. Oh, he's a healer. And then we go down there, travel down here and say, well, well, she saw him as a way maker. Now we see God is now being magnified. Somebody shall holler to you. He said, I, I, I didn't have, but he provided. So now we got Brother Laurent said, well, God provided me this new place to live. And so now I see God. Oh, God made connections like that. So now God is becoming bigger. Which means that his character or his roles start counting them up. Oh, man, God is this. He's that. He's this. He's that. He's this. He's that. So now you can see him how I see him. So now he's become bigger. So now when I go through, I can say, you know what? Jalissa told me a story. And because she told me that story, I can see Jesus in a different light. Somebody shout hallelujah. And one of the key things it says, it says, oh, magnify the Lord, how? With. With. So now if Dante is magnifying him, and then Laurent magnifies him, and then Terrence magnifies him, Mike starting to magnify So now we got this enormous God that is limitless, have no limits. Because you see him one way, I see him another. Now they become bigger. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I serve a big God. Now, not only does the Bible tell us that, <clears throat> but it talks about exalting him in the same scripture. And let us exalt his name together. And so... Magnifying is making bigger, but when we talk about exalting, it deals with holding him in a higher status or in a high regard. So now when I regard God or when I look at him, his status is elite, meaning that he's never made a mistake. He's perfect in all his ways. He, can, he don't have any losses. All he has is wins. When I exalt him, it talks about his record. And the Bible talks about whose report are you going to believe? Who reports you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Why? Because he don't lose. He's not a loser. My God, somebody say hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my king ain't no loser. He's perfect in all of his ways. He don't make no mistakes. Even with the little situation that you got going on in your life, it's not a mistake. <laughs> it's in God's perfect will. He made you go through that because he's perfect. That blind boy was down there blind. They said, well, how did you get blind? Who was the one that sinned? Did your daddy sin? Did your mama sin? They said, no, ain't nobody sinned. The reason why I'm blind is because I know there's a healer that's came to make a way and prove that he's a healer. So God will make you go through something just to show you who he is. To show you what he can bring you out of. Somebody shout hallelujah. We serve not just a king. And I'm telling y'all, y'all need to do better with reverencing our king. Got to do better. We have to do better by the reverence. Sometimes we don't reverence him like we should. Facebook and Instagram and Twitter get more regard than God. You know why? When we first wake up, it's not, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. It's check my notifications. So now we've exalted Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, your little friends and all these different things, checking all your notifications. But we don't have that regard for God. That's dangerous. God is supreme. God is elite. God could produce whatever we need, but we have to reverence him. And a lot of times we haven't really got what we need from God and what we want from God, not need, but want from God. It's simply because we have failed to reverence him. He tell us to delight ourselves in him, and he'll give us what? The desires 
So whatever my heart desires, if I delight myself in him, if I recognize who he is, if I, my God, if I could just reverence him for being the king. Sometimes we wait for reverence based off of what God has done. So now, God, you do something, I'll reverence you. You don't reverence him for what he's done. You reverence him because he's God. And see, before and after, he's still God. So whether he do it or he don't do it, he's still God. He's still a perfect God, whether we want him to do something and he do it or not. He's still God. And guess what? He's still sovereign. He's sovereign without your little praise. He's God without your little worship. But that's what he desires of us because he's created us. And out of creating us, he created us to be that praise and that worship piece and that reverence piece in the earth realm. Let us stand. <clears throat> Lord, I want to, I want to reverence you better. I want to do better in my reverencing. I want to do better in my worship. I want to do better in my praise. I want to do better in recognizing exactly who you are. Lord, what you've done for us cannot compare to our worship. Our mere existence, scripture says it's in him that we live, we move and have our being. Everything that we've done with life is because God allowed us to have the breath. The skill and the talent that you have, it's not hereditary. The reason why you can sing is not hereditary. God placed that there. God anointed you specifically for that. While you're standing, I want everybody just take 60 seconds and just reverence the king. Reverence him. Talk to him. Let him know how holy he is, how we're nothing without him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you. God is a healer. God is a healer. Hallelujah. God is a healer. Thank you, Jesus. I need some people to pray. We're looking for God to do a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God is a healer. God is a healer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing. 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 Yes, Thank you. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Come on. Go to the horse, y'all. Roll it. It's done in Jesus' name. I said it's done in Jesus' name. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Oh, my, my, yeah. Hey! Oh, my, my, yeah. Come on, we ought to praise him. Come on, somebody ought to praise him. He's a healer. Where's that, Maya? 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 Glory to God. Glory to Hestia, the Masata. Glory to God. Mandala Masa de Bohosia. Glory to God. Let Masa. Glory. Glory. Hey, Yama. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. That's a Dalabaya. Glory, glory, glory. Let's 
If there's anybody else has been feeling anything in your body, you need to be healed. I feel the healing atmosphere right now. If there's anything else, anybody else, just come right now. We're going to come in faith, believing that it's already done. Come on, come in faith, believing that it's done. It's time. Go Come on, let's go, 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 Glory, glory, glory. Yes, Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Healing. Hey, Healing. Hey, glory. Glory to Hey, in the name of Jesus, yes, sir, I'm a whole shot. In the name of Jesus, hey, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Shalom Amasia. Glory to God. Healing. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey. In the name. Hey. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey. In the name of Jesus, hey, In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hey, Glory to God, 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 glory to in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you, God. Yes, I am. Thank you. Yes, I am. Glory to God. Come on, somebody tell him it's done. 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 Come on, it's done, it's done, it's done. Yes, Glory. Glory to God. 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 Gl
Thank you, Jesus. It's done, it's done, it's done. It's done. It's done. I feel something in here. Thank you, Lord. Listen, everybody that had an issue in your body, 